Today we're going to go through lesson 10.6 and 10.7 on the area and circumference of a circle and then an area of a sector which is part of a circle and the length of an arc which is part of the circumference of the circle. We're going to go through the parts of a circle, how to calculate the circumference, and then how to calculate the area, and then we'll talk about central angles, arcs, and sectors, how to find the lengths of arcs and the area of sectors. All right, so by the end of class today, you'll be able to do three things. First, to be able to name arcs, central angles, and determine their values. Secondly, you'll be able to find the lengths of two different things, the whole circle's circumference and part of the circle's circumference, which is called an arc. And thirdly, you'll be able to find the area of two things, the whole circle and part of the circle called a sector. All right, let's talk about the basics of a circle, a circle's parts. So you might ask, what is a circle? How is it defined? A circle is all is the shape of all the points in a plane that are equidistant from a single point, and that point is called the center. So there is center A and all the points around it that are equidistant from point A. And how do we name it? Um, you would you name a center based on its center. Therefore, the circle is called is called circle A since A is its center point. So we would call this circle A. Okay, and a circle has some parts. The center is the part we've already talked about. That's A. That's the point from which all the other points are measured. It's got a diameter. A diameter is the distance across a cir the circle through the central point. So essentially cutting the circle in half is a diameter. And then the radius is the distance from the center point to any point on the circle. We said we started with A and then it's an equidistant all the points that are equidistant from that point, that distance is the radius. So there's the radius from the center to a point on the circle. And if you put two radii together, back to back, it is the same thing as a diameter. So there's one radius, there's two radius, two radii, and together they make a diameter. Okay. And the way you can think of, of diameters and radii is think of pizza. So if I have a pizza, when I cut all the way across a pizza, that's a diameter. Each of the individual slices is made up of two, radi two radii. So that's a radius, that's a radius, and there are an infinite number of radii and diameters. I can cut the pizza an infinite number of ways, and so all of those are radii and diameters. All right, so let's go through our notes with our formal definitions. A circle is all the planar points equidistant from a given point called the center. That center is a fixed central point. The, so there's the center. The center of the circle is B. And you, a circle is named by its center. So we would call this, and that's a, that's a symbol for a circle, is a, is a circle with a dot in the middle for the center. And so we would call this circle B. The diameter is a segment that contains a center and has both endpoints on the circle. So for example, AC here, as I've drawn it, is a diameter. And a radius is a segment that has one endpoint on the center and the other on the, cent on the circle. So for example, I drew BD, but also of course BA and BC are also radii. And then as we said, because a circle is defined as all the points that are equidistant from that center point and those and that distance is the radius then all the radii of a circle are congruent all of them all the distances of the radius are equal so that all of those distances are equal and finally congruent circles are just circles with the same radius all right Let's talk a little bit about central angles. Okay, a central angle is an angle with the center of the circle as the angle's vertex. So for example, right there is a central angle. We can say that angle AOC, the thing that's blue there, is a central angle because O is the center of the circle. That red line, that red um, curved line there, A to C, is called an arc. Part of a circle is an arc. And that curved line is called arc AC, and it is written as AC with an arc mark over it. Um, the one I have there looks kind of like a little roof. It's supposed to be a part of a circle. Um, I just can't make that in PowerPoint. This is as close as I can come, but it should actually be a circle, that um, a little circle mark or part of a circle it looks like an arc, not like two lines like that, but that's as close as I can come. 
Arcs are measured in degrees, with 360 being an entire circle, so 360 is all the way around a circle, and the measure of a central angle is equal to the measure of an arc. So if the measure of the angle is 70 degrees, then the measure of that arc is also 70 degrees. So we would say that the measure of angle AOC is 70, and the measure of arc AC is 70 degrees, because again the central angle and the arc are equal. Alright, so central angles is an angle with a vertex of the center of the circle, and again it is equal to the measure of the arc created by that central angle. So we have a central angle there of CBD, but it could be any of the angles that has B as a vertex. A semicircle is half the circle. If the whole circle is 360 degrees, then a semicircle is 180 degrees, and so it's the circle that is cut in half by the diameter. A major arc is an arc that is larger than a semicircle, so it's a part of a circle that is bigger than 180 degrees. And when we write those down, we write them down, as you can see here, I wrote an example of ACD. You use three points to write down a major arc, because if I start at A, and then I go around the top of my circle to C, and then I continue on to D, that shows me that it's a major arc, because <coughs> it's bigger than half a circle. A minor arc is an arc that is smaller than a semicircle or less than 180 degrees and those for example like CD or DA you label with two points. So the major arc that I have labeled here ACD and the minor arc I have AD both of them have A and D as endpoints but the major arc also contains C, so it must be bigger than 180 degrees. I go around the top of the circle through C to D, while AD, just the two points, must be a minor arc, and so it does not go through C. It just goes A to D, which is less than 180 degrees, less than half the circle. All right, let's do some example problems. So you should pause this and see if you can do this problem on your own, and then come back and see if you got the right answer. So this problem is first asking me, what are the minor arcs of circle O here? Well, I've got four of them. I've got AD, I've got AC, I've got CE, and I've got ED. And that's four of them all the way around the circle. All right. What are the semicircles of circle O? Well, I've got two, di <coughs> excuse me, two diameters there, A and E, AE, and DC. And both of them cut the circle in half. So... DAC is a semicircle that's cut in half by DC, as is CED. Both of those are cut by the diameter CD. ACE and EDA are both semicircles cut by the diameter AE. And then finally it's asking me, what are the major arcs of the circle? that contain point A. And there are four of them. I've got starting at D, going through A and C all the way to E, so I called that DAE. I could have called it DCE as well. Then starting at A, going clockwise to C, E, and then D. So that's a major arc that's bigger than half the circle. Starting at C and going clockwise through E and D all the way to A. That is, a, um, that is a major arc, because it's bigger than half a circle. And then finally starting at E and going clockwise through D and A all the way to C. That is a major arc. So there are four of them there that contain point A. All right. If you feel comfortable being able to name arcs and central angles, then you can uh, go to classwork 10.6.1, pause this video, go to 10.6.1, and make sure you can do it, and then come on back to the video. Let's move on to problem 10.6, problem 2, asking us to name ver the values of various arcs. Okay, so we're going to start with arc ABC in, in circle O. Well, O is a the center of the circle, and AC goes through that, so AC must be a diameter. And if AC is a diameter, then ABC must be a semicircle. 
and all semicircles have a value of half a circle or 180, half of 360, so that must be 180. To find AB, what I realize is, of course, arc BC equals 32 degrees, because angle BOC equals 32, so arc BC must equal 32, and AB plus BC together equals ABC. And as we said, ABC from the first problem is 180, and we just said that BC is 32, so I can substitute those values in, subtract 32 from both sides, and I end up with AB equals 148. To find BD, I know that BC plus CD equals BD. And as we said before, if the angle BOC equals 32, then the arc BC must equal 32. So 32 plus 58 must equal BD. So BD must equal 90 degrees. And then finally, it's asking us to find AD. Well, AD plus CD equals that whole half semi equals that whole semicircle ADC. So if it's a semicircle, it must equal 180. AD plus DC, which is 58, must equal 180. If I subtract 58 from both sides, I get AD equals 122. If you feel comfortable solving problems about the values of angles and arcs, then you should go to classwork 10.6.2 and try those problems, and then come back and uh, we'll move forward with our next objective. All right, so Looking at our notes for 10.6, we will continue. Concentric circles are coplanar circles that have the same center. So for example, those two circles there, the small one and the big one, both have the same center. So those are what are called concentric circles. The circumference of a circle is the perimeter, or the length of the line drawing the circle. It's essentially the perimeter of a circle is called the circumference. In a polygon, we call it a perimeter. In a, in a circle, we call it the circumference. And the circumference of a circle is its diameter, which we've already talked about, times a number, pi. Pi is an irrational number. That means you can never write it down. It'll go on and on forever. It's about equal to 3.14159, but again, you can go forever and ever. And since the diameter is twice the radius, we usually write the formula in terms of radius, so we say pi equals 2 pi r, but it would be just as good to say pi, I'm sorry, the circumference equals 2 pi r, it would be just as good to say the circumference equals uh, diameter times pi or pi diameter. All right, so the circumference of a circle is a distance around a circle. It's similar to a polygon's perimeter. As we said, pi is equal to the ratio of any circle's circumference to its diameter. And then that allows us to come up with a formula for a circle. So a circle, the circumference of a circle is equal to pi times a diameter, or more, we usually use it as pi times 2r or 2 pi r, because again, 2r is the diameter. Okay. All right, let's look at example problems 3 and 4 in 10.6, now that we know the formula for the circumference of a circle, and see if we can solve this one. So that first circle there, that line goes from the center of the circle to a point on the circle, which makes that line a radius. So I know my radius is 4 feet, and the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, so I can plug in 4 for my value of r, and that equals 8 pi, put it into my calculator, and it's going to equal 25.1327, and again, that number is going to go on and on forever and ever, it will never stop, because pi is an irrational number. But rounding that, that would be equal to 25.1, and it's a distance, so my unit would just be feet. All right, let's look at the second problem. Looking at that line there, that goes from one point on the circle through the center to another point on the circle, which makes this a diameter. And as we said, the formula is pi d, so I could just plug in pi times 14, which is equal to 14 pi, which is equal to 49.98. If I am trying to round, and then if I round that, that would be 44.0, in this case, meters, 44 meters around that circle. All right, so these problems were asking me to round. Now let's do these exact problems, or similar problems again, but asking us to find the exact circumference. And so since pi is an irrational number, to find the exact circumference, we will have to leave these in terms of pi. So that line right there is a 
radius. It goes from the center to the point, a point on the circle. So my formula is going to be 2 pi r. So 2 pi times 7, which is just going to be 14 pi. And that's all. That's it, because the exact value is going to have pi in it, because I can't, if I put it in a calculator, I would have to round. So it would equal 14 pi feet. Looking at this one, this one is going to be, diameter is 20 feet. And so, excuse me, this is uh, going from side to side, so it must be a diameter, and the diameter is 20 feet. So the circumference equals pi times diameter, which equals 20 pi. So the circumference here is 20 pi feet. All right, if you feel comfortable finding the circumference of a circle, both rounded and exact, then you should go to classwork 10.6.3, circumference, and show that you can do that. Pause the video, do those problems, and come back, and we'll move on to arc length. To find the arc length, we'll have to use the central angle. So here is a circle that has um, that has a central angle in it, and that central angle is 60 degrees. So therefore, that arc must be 60 degrees. Okay. So to find the arc length, first we calculate the circumference of the circle, the entire thing. And to do that, I will need a radius. So if my radius is six, as I have there, the formula is two pi r. That would therefore be 2 pi times 6, which equals 12 pi. So the circumference of this entire circle all the way around is 12 pi units. Next, I need to find the proportion of the circle that I want to be talking about here. So the arc AB is only a, purport, is only a portion of that circle. So I need to find what that ratio of proportion is. And to do that, I'm going to find what's called the central angle ratio, or abbreviated as CAR, C-A-R. And to do that, I'm going to find the central angle and divide it by the whole circle, divide it by 360. So in this case, take the angle measure over 360. That would be, in this case, the angle measure is 60. So it's going to be 60 over 360, which equals 1 sixth. So that arc length there is 1 sixth of the length of the entire circle. So Finally, to multiply, to finally to find the, circum the circle circumference by par, I'm sorry, finally to find the arc, I multiply the circle circumference by the car. So the arc length equals the circle circumference, which is 12 pi, times 1 sixth, multiply those together, and I get that this arc length is 2 pi. So I, I first find the whole circumference, find the proportion that I want, and then multiply them together to get the answer of the length of the arc. Okay, so what is an arc length? An arc length is a fraction of the circumference of a circle. The central angle ratio, or the car, is the measure of the central angle over 360. And again, the car will equal a fraction less than one, because you're going to be talking about a portion of the circle. You can't have something greater than one of a circle. And so the formula is just going to be the arc length is going to equal the car times the circumference, so that would equal the car's central angle over 360, and the circumference is 2 pi r. Put those two together, and you're going to get the formula for the arc length. All right, let's see, let's do a couple problems here. So the first problem is asking us to find the arc length rounded to the nearest tenth. So I know the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, and my radius I can see there is 8. So multiply that out. I know the circumference of this whole circle is 16 pi. Okay. But the car is 120 degrees of the 360, so that is one third. So of the 16 pi, I only want one third of it. So if I so the arc length is equal to the whole circumference times the ratio, the central angle ratio. So that would be 16 pi times 1 third, which I put into a calculator is 16.755. And if I round that, that would be 16.8 yards. All right, let's do, the, let's do this next problem here. It's asking us to find the exact arc length. So this one is going to be exact, so we're not going to put this into a calculator. For this one, we find out our our circumference is 2 pi r, as it always is. So 2 pi, the, ratio, the, the radius is 16. So that would mean the circumference of the circle equals 32 pi. That's the entire circle. But I don't want the entire circle. I want the ratio of 150 over 360 of the circle. So I want, when I reduce that, 5 twelfths of the circle. 
So if I multiply my arc, to get my arc length, I multiply the circumference of the circle times the central angle ratio, multiply those together, and I end up with, I end up with, sorry, uh, 160 pi over 12, which I can then reduce to 40 pi over three, and this is inches. So my arc length is gonna be 40 pi over three. And again, that's all I can do to reduce it. All right, if you feel comfortable in finding the length of arcs, both either the exact or rounded, then you should go to 10.6.4 arc length, solve those problems, push pause on the video, and then come back when you're done. All right, we've talked in the past about the circumference of a circle going around. Now let's talk about the area of a circle. The area of a circle is the number of square units inside the circle, just like any area. And the area of the circle is its radius squared times pi. So the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, let's do some example problems of that. So looking at our first problem here, right there is going from the center of my circle to a point on my circle, so that must be a radius. And the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. If my radius is two, that's pi two squared, which is gonna be four pi. If I put that into a calculator, that's 12.566, which rounds to 12.6 kilometers squared, or square kilometers, right? The, you, um, distance is in units, so like inches or miles, and then area would be in square units, like square kilometers or square yards. Next problem is asking me to find the area of the circle and rounding to the nearest tenth again. This one, however, when I the line that they're giving us goes from the one side of the circle to the other side of the circle, which is called a diameter. And the formula of the circle is pi r squared. If, when we're finding the circumference, we could just use diameter because it's just pi d, but this one I need pi r squared. So I know if my diameter is just equal to two radii. So if 12 equals two radii, then each radius must be equal to six. So r equals six in this. So I can plug in six into my value, multiply it out, I get 36 pi, put it into a calculator and round to get 113.1 square yards. So that was, that was rounding. Now let's do similar problems, but this time we're gonna find the exact values. Okay, so this one is a radius from the center to a point of the circle is a radius. So the area equals pi r squared, which equals pi four squared, which equals 16 pi, and our units are square kilometers. This one, and again, there's nothing we can do. It's just 16 pi. We have to leave it in terms of pi if we want the exact value. And the next problem is showing us this line here, which goes from one point on the circle to another through the center. So that's called a diameter. And if the entire, and we need a radius. So if the diameter is 2r, if 2r equals 18, if the diameter is 18, then the radius must be 9. So I can plug that into my formula. It's pi nine squared, which just equals 81 pi, and this one, the units would be square inches. All right, so if you feel comfortable finding the area of a circle, either the exact area or rounded, then you should go to 10.7.1 circle area and solve those problems, push pause on the video, and then come back when you're done. Just as, just as before we found the circumference and then part of a circumference called an arc, now we're finding the area and part of the area is called a sector. A sector is a region of a circle bounded by an arc and the two radii to the arc's endpoints. So there is an example of a, of a sector. We call that sector AOB and that orange part is the arc, I mean, excuse me, is the sector. Okay, so just as we did before, this is very similar to finding the, using a central angle to find the arc length, except now our first step is we're going to find, to find the sector area. First, we have to find the entire circle's area. So if the radius is six, the area is pi r squared. So that would be pi six squared, which would be 36 pi. Secondly, I find the proportion of this circle that we want, just again, as we did for the arc length. So in this case, that would be 60 over 360, 
because I have 60 as my central angle. So 60 over 360 equals 1 sixth. So finally I have to multiply the circle's area by the car. So if I, I know the sector area equals the circle area times the central angle ratio, multiply those two together, and that would be 36 pi times 1 sixth, which equals 6 pi. So I know that this sector area is 6 pi. All right, so what is the central angle ratio? Same as we had in our previous notes for 10 6. It's just the car is the measure of angle, the measure of the central angle over 360, and it has to equal less than one. And so to find the area of the sector of a circle, it is the fraction of a circle. Um, to find it, I'll take the car times the area. So the central angle over 360 times the formula for area, which would be pi r squared. All right, so let's find the area of these sectors. The first one is asking us to is round it to the nearest tenth. So I have to first find the area, which is pi r squared, which in this case would be pi 13 squared, which is going to be 169 pi. Next, it's asking us we have to find the car, which in this case is going to be 210 over 360. So if I reduce that, that's 7 twelfths. And then finally, I need to multiply those together. So 169 pi times 7 twelfths, put all that together in my calculator, that would equal 309.708, which is going to equal 309.7. And again, the units are going to be inches squared or square inches because we're finding an area. And the next one is asking us to find the exact area of this sector. And so again, I need to find the area of the whole circle, which is pi r squared which in this case is pi 3 squared, which is going to be 9 pi is the area of the entire circle. Then I need to find the central angle ratio, which in this case is 315 over 360, which if I reduce that down, divide by 45 on the denominator and the numerator, I get that that is 7 eighths. So then if I multiply, if I multiply 9 pi times 7 eighths, put that together, I get 63 pi over 8 and I can't reduce it any more than that and the units would be square feet. So the segment area is 63 pi over 8 square feet. Alright, if you feel comfortable finding the area of a sector then you should go to uh, classwork 10.7.2 and solve those problems and put pause the video and then come on back when you are done. The final thing we have to be able to do is, in the past we've been given either the di diameter or radius of a circle and had to find the area or circumference. Now we're going to be given one of those and have to find the other. So in the first example, it's asking us to find the area of a circle with a circumference of 20 pi meters. Well, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r and we, it told us the circumference is, two, is 20 pi. So if I divide both sides by pi and both sides by 2, I end up with the radius is 10. So if the circumference of a circle is 20 pi, then the radius is 10. And if the radius is 10, then I can find the area. The area is pi r squared, which is going to be pi times 10 squared, which is going to be 100 pi, and the units would be square meters. The next problem is asking us the other way around. Find the circumference if an area is 81 pi square meters. So if the area is pi r squared and that's equal to 81 pi, then again I can divide by pi, take the square root of both sides, and I end up with r equals 9. And if r equals 9, the circumference is 2 pi r, so that would be 2 times 9 and that would be 18 pi, and again the units would be meters. This is a distance, not an area, so it would just be meters, not square meters. Okay, if you feel comfortable finding the area of a circle and the area of a circle and the circle circumference and the area of a circle, then go to classwork 10.7.3 circumference area and solve that.